Hey everybody, it's Brent Central Arkansas. Today we're going to be starting some seeds. Some of the seeds are going to be planted in here in the fawn systems, like this one you see here. And others are going to be planted in the outside garden, either in containers or in the ground. Let me show you, take, bring you in close here, and show you what I've got going and what we're going to do. Okay, we've got some 10 by 20 flats here. There's a 10 inches by 20 inches. And these flats are designed to hold various seed containers and allow one to water and the plants, the containers will wick water from the bottom. That's preferable for me. In each one of those, we've got our planters here. These are two by two inch. And that's what I'm gonna put all my uh, seedlings or seeds in until they get trans, uh, transplant size. And then we've got some labels here. I'm going to write on the labels. I'm going to put a piece of tape on there and then write on with a Sharpie so I'll know what I've planted. I will uh, show you the soil that I'm using. This is it. You've seen it lots of times if you've watched any of my videos. All this is is about a third parboiled rice holes, a third aged rice holes that I'm reusing, and about um, a third compost. Maybe a little less compost then a third, but basically one to one to one. Okay, got some beautiful sun shining on me, a little bright, but that's okay. I like the sun this time of year. So I'm gonna take one of my little containers here. I'm gonna pack it about uh, mostly full, like so. And a trick you can do is use the bottom of another container and kind of compress it a little bit so it's even and flat. And I'm gonna do that until this entire tray is full. No problem at all. Real easy. Now when you're starting seed, you need a pretty sterile mix. You don't want uh, any kind of fungus or insects like fungus gnats or anything like that, which are, can be devastating to your seedlings. So you want to get sterile media if possible. Doesn't have to be what I'm using to be anything. I think people make a big deal about it. Now, if it's not sterile, you'll probably have pretty good success too, but uh, you always risk the chance of not. So, better safe than sorry, I'd say. All right, done a few for you, so let me finish this up and uh, the other trays and I'll bring you in and show you what we're going to do next. All right, we got four flats planted, the little containers planted in each one. There's uh, 36 in each 10 by 20. So that should give me plenty of plants. So now I need to plan what I want to plant in this. And you need to think ahead when you do this. You need to lay out your garden plan, lay out your greenhouse, lay out whatever it is you're going to grow. Have an idea of consumption and the things you like and the varieties you like and get all that stuff in ahead of time. And then when you're ready to plant, uh, plant the number that you want out into your garden or greenhouse or what have you. Now I tend to do about 10 to 20% extra and that's in case there's germination failures or, you know, maybe there's just extra room I can squeeze in somewhere. So right now we're going to take these little plant stakes here we're going to put a piece of painters tape on it mark it and uh, then we're going to place them in the little uh, containers and um, little cells here and uh, then plant the seed okay as you can see here i've got a little ziploc bag and i put my seeds that i save from uh, my own grows in these little ziploc bags started doing that uh, last year and of course just a little bit of paper stock. The paper stock also serves as a moisture uh, absorber uh, to help keep the seeds dry. This particular brand is Chocolate Stripes. 
I'm going to put several uh, uh, cells planted with chocolate stripes and I'm going to take, I'll go ahead and show you a little piece of painter's tape here and affix it to one of these little plant stakes and then I'll just write chocolate stripes on there like so now once I plant them in here I may put them individually depending on how many I plant or I may put one tag for an entire flat or one tag for a row but in which way you slice it basic what you're trying to do is identify the plant so you'll know what to plant and where to plant them so let me plant up some of these tomatoes and uh, eggplants and peppers and some other things and uh, I'll bring you back well as you can see from the two front flats there I've planted some tomatoes peppers and eggplants I've completed that and I put a little bit of the uh, media on top of that still have to water that in but uh, what I'm going to plant now are two types of onions and with onions I usually mass plant them so I'm going to put uh, two seeds probably about 30 or 40 seed in each little pot uh, each little container seems like a lot but onions are really hardy you can pluck them out and replant them so we're going to plant uh, uh, candy onion from seed and Australian brown onion so I'll, I'll do a little bit of that right now This particular one was vacuum sealed and it's been frozen for a number of months. So this will also test the uh, how vacuum sealing works. I've done it with beans and others um, and they've all come back great. Uh, germination was great. Okay so we're putting in the uh, Australian brown mass planting like I said it's going to be a mess but that's okay when they start uh, growing up there'll be a lot of seed in those two little ones now let's do the uh, that was actually candy let's do the uh, Australian Browns same thing these seeds are really dark colored and they mix in really they they camouflaged amongst the medium here so you have to kind of watch it pretty good as you're placing in there because you want to kind of disperse them evenly as much as possible because they're already going to be crowded so you want to make as much use of that space as you can So yeah, these are just four sales. I'm going to say there's about 100 to 150 of each onion. And then when they get a little older, we'll transplant them either directly into pots that are already growing other stuff uh, so that I can grow the onions out in those same pots or possibly um, in a pot of their own or some other growing medium. It really doesn't matter at this point. We've got a lot of time until they're ready to transplant. So I'm going to do that with several other things here and then I'll bring you in close and show you what I got planted. I'm just going to take and uh, put a pinch on each one of these, just like so, just a little pinch. Alright, just kind of flatten them out there. The last thing we want to do is we want to water all this in so it's nice and settled against the seed and it's moist but we're not going to pour water into the flats until they're in their final resting home because we don't want that sloshing around we're trying to lift it and move it so these are going to go into the heated greenhouse or the winter greenhouse as i call it now and uh it's perfect temperature in there and they should germinate just fine so let me do some watering now my storage barrels in the back back there have um, a hose hooked up to it and I'm going to run some off first because the sun has probably made these kind of hot. So let me do that. 
Oh, not too bad. So here are my varieties. As you can see, I've got some big beef, some sun gold, Cherokee stripes, tomatoes. I've got some more bella pe peppers, some mariachi peppers, the Stadang Gandia um, eggplants. I've got my tomato. That's a Succeed uh, Heavy Truss. That's what the HT stands for on that particular one. I've got a old heirloom. Well, I don't know. It's not really an heirloom, but when I tried to go three years ago or so and it didn't work, I had some seed. So we're going to try to do the big the uh, blonde boar and see what that tastes like. I don't believe I've ever tasted it. And then we got a cross of mine uh, Hag Campari F3 and it's about a medium size that's why the M is on there. Let me show you the other side. Okay on this side it's kind of busy on the far right here. We've got candy onions and then some Australian onions in the back. Minuet cabbage, Chinese cabbage, Joe's long cayenne pepper, Diablo Brussels sprouts, some Snowball A cauliflower, uh, four more Minuet Chinese cabbage, uh, some Discovery cabbage, some Golden Acre cabbage, so, uh, Pac-Man, uh, regular Pac-Man broccoli to grow as a control, and Pac-Man F2 or second generation that I'm going to try to grow out here and uh, compare it to and see what we get. So that's our seed. That's what we're starting for now. Okay, before I bring these into the greenhouse, uh, the heated greenhouse in there, I, I don't want any insects or any types of issues with disease or, or fungus or mold or any of that kind of stuff. So uh, what I'm going to show you here is a little spray that I'm going to spray these with. Um, it works pretty good for fungus gnats, which is a kind of an issue when you first start planting uh, because they're uh, pretty prevalent around uh, fungus areas and mo high moisture areas. So the first thing I'm going to tell you about is cold pressed neem oil. It's not the same as the stuff you can buy a lot of times. It's becoming more popular. This cold pressed has the uh, as a direct still in it. It's an anti feedant um, that uh, that the other commercial varieties of neem oil have taken out. Plus, it, it doesn't have an emulsifier in it, so you have to add some form of emulsifier, and that's why we're going to add a little bit of Dawn. So this is a one liter sprayer, uh, just your basic type sprayer. I got that off of Amazon. I don't get a kickback from Amazon. I just use Amazon all the time. Now when cold pressed neem oil is hot, it's runny, like you can see here. When it gets the least bit cold, it'll get uh, firm, it'll get hard, so you have to warm it up to make sure it works. So I'm going to put just about a teaspoon in this. Uh, a suggestion would be about a tablespoon for a gallon of water, but this is one liter. So I'm going to put about a teaspoon in there. And uh, the next thing you want to do is add just enough Dawn detergent or any other detergent or with soap, this insecticide soap doesn't work really good for emulsifying, but I'm going to add some of that anyway. Um, but you want it to disperse the oil. There's a layer of oil on the top, and you just want to put just enough to disperse that uh, because the Dawn can uh, dry up your plant leaves. So you don't want, you just want just enough to help it stick to the plant uh, but uh, get rid of the oil. The uh, emulsifier uh, allows it to mix entirely with the water and allows you to spray it. So once you add the Dawn you look in there, you let it sit for a second, you look in there and you see if there's any oil uh, floating to the top still. In this case there is so I'm going to add a little bit more. And when I do a gallon's worth the approximate amount is about one tablespoon of neem to about three quarters of a taste tablespoon of uh, Dawn. So a little less Dawn to neem by uh, volume. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm also going to add an insecticidal soap. Just about a teaspoon of that. This is safer brand. You probably don't have to add it, but I do it. 
this particular case. And last but not least, I'm going to add a little bit of potassium bicarbonate. It's similar to sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. It's a little more effective for fungus and uh, molds and stuff like that than uh, baking soda. I got all this online through Amazon. All safe, organic stuff. Uh, just a little bit in there. Didn't come in this container, but it came in a, a plastic bag. And I put it in a little container here. All right, now I'm going to put this back on. Shake it thoroughly, obviously, to get it mixed up. And then all we're going to do is just spray the tops of these very thoroughly. So now let's spray it with this mixture. We want to get the top nice and soaked. We want to get it all over the edges of the containers. That way any insect that walks on it will hit the residue. And uh, I want to say a special thanks to the people who subscribe to me. You watch my channel and you comment and I surely appreciate it. I'm certainly no expert. I don't try to be an expert. But one thing you can do with me, you can always count on is when I plant, whenever I do something, I'll do a follow-up. It's usually based on experience or research of my own. But when I do my follow-up, you'll be able to see if it's successful or not. And if it's successful, that's what you should do. You should follow people who show results. Results of the things that they're doing. Okay? Those are the people to follow. Emulate the successful. So, those of you who are subscribing all the time, thank you very much. I could throw out a lot of names, don't want to really get into that. But those of you who are just arriving, you have questions, you're not sure about something, I'll give you my experience on it. Um, I've been gardening almost my whole life at some point or another. Uh, when I was young, we had a traditional garden and I went into traditional garden uh, again in my 20s. And then uh, later on, I, I went from that to container gardening, to hydroponics, to self-watering containers and all that. So I have kind of a broad experience. Um, not the best. There are certainly one, uh, channels out there that are more uh, better able to describe things or more productive and all that. But I have a great time and I love talking to people. So if you got something to add, please do so. I also really appreciate those who subscribe and um, and like the videos. That's really cool too. So if you want to do that, I encourage you to do that. All right. So now we're going to take these into the greenhouse, and I'm going to fill the trays to about a quarter or so of each tray, and that way it can wick up water from the bottom, and uh, that'll be their home. So let me do that. I'll bring you back and show you that, and that'll probably conclude this video. Okay, I hope you can see that. It is 78 degrees in the winter greenhouse and the humidity is about 46%, says it's dry. But in the fawns here, you can see uh, that I have got room underneath the fawn platforms and that's where I put my seedlings. The temperature is just right, humidity is just right, everything should do great. This is Brent, you guys. We'll see you later.